From November 30th to December 11th, the world will converge in Paris to sign a treaty with the objective of keeping global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial levels. This treaty, which has been negotiated for the past four years, warrants that every country on this planet contribute in some way or the other to achieve its stated objective. Till November 2015, about 90% of these countries had submitted their intended nationally determined contributions or INDCs to curb greenhouse gas emissions. The US too has set its own domestic goals for cutting down greenhouse gases. US INDCs talk about an economy-wide greenhouse gas emission reduction target of 26 to 28 percent below 2005 levels by 2025. This is a target they call fair and ambitious. But a study of the US INDCs done by the Center for Science and Environment finds that these pleasures are not fair, let alone ambitious. The US, along with the European Union, Russia and Canada, is responsible for 50% of all greenhouse gases emitted between 1855 and 2011. Of this, the US alone has a share of 21%. Compare this with India, which is only about 2.8%, and China at 10.7%. In 2010, in Cancun, Mexico, the US had put its own roadmap for emission reductions. The figures it cited were 17% below 2005 levels by 2020, 30% by 2025 and 42% by 2030. Now it has lowered its emission reduction figures even more. Where is the fairness or ambition in this? What if one were to compare the US INDCs with that of the European Union? The 28 countries which now comprise the European Union has the burden of being the second highest historical emitter of CO2. And unlike the US, the EU calculates its baseline year as 1990, the one set by the Kyoto Protocol. The US will reduce its total greenhouse gas emissions by 34 to 37% below 2005 levels by 2030. But if one were to use a 1990 baseline, the US will cut emissions only by 23 to 27 percent by 2030. On the other hand, the EU has committed to reduce its emissions by 40 percent below its 1990 levels by 2030. Compared to 1990, the EU will reduce its annual greenhouse gas emissions by 2,250 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent by 2030 compared to the US's 1,400 to 1,650. This comparison also becomes starker if one was to look at the per capita emissions of the US and the EU in 2030. An American citizen will emit 12.5 tons as compared to 6.5 tons per person from the EU. After walking out of the Kyoto Protocol in 2001, the United States for the first time has agreed to be part of a treaty that will address climate change to keep global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius. One can say that it is laudable. But once the emission reduction figures emerge, the US's efforts look half-hearted and shoddy, given that it has the highest historical responsibility and maximum resources to curb CO2. Will it stand up now and say that it can do more?